This is breaking news. We have six months. I repeat, only six months remaining. Please evacuate to the designated sectors immediately. A supermassive black hole is heading toward Earth. You have six months to live. There is no escape, no bunker deep enough, no spaceship fast enough. This is not science fiction. This is what would actually happen if a monster with the mass of four million suns decided to devour our planet whole. Before we witness Earth's final moments, you need to understand what we're dealing with. At the center of our Milky Way galaxy sits Sagittarius A-star, a supermassive black hole weighing 4.1 million times more than our sun. Its event horizon, the point of no return, stretches 12 million kilometers across. That's 17 times wider than the sun itself. But here's the terrifying part. Supermassive black holes aren't rare. There are millions of them scattered throughout the universe. And if one went rogue, drifting through space like a cosmic predator, nothing could stop it. But how would we even know it's coming? The answer will shock you. Six months before, astronomers spotted something weird, a black spot in the night sky where there used to be stars, not a cloud, not a nebula, a void. Streeling stars close to the patch start lumbering uncontrollably as their light is bent in impossible directions. This is gravitational lensing. The black hole's gravity is so strong, it is warping space-time and bending light around it as if the black hole were a cosmic magnifying glass. Within days, every other space agency on Earth verifies the nightmare. There's a supermassive black hole heading toward our solar system. The media erupts. Governments scramble. But there's nowhere to run. Our fastest spacecraft would need 70,000 years to travel to the nearest star. We're trapped. As the black hole approaches, the first victims aren't even on Earth. Three months before Earth dies, the black hole permeates the Oort cloud. The Oort cloud is a shell of icy comets that ring our solar system 100,000 astronomical units from the sun. Its gravity rips through them like a goddamn wrecking ball. Thousands of comets, once safely in orbit, are now flung inward toward the solar system's heart. The collisions are magnificent explosions. Some comets, sling-shotted by phenomena beyond our comprehension, spin off like cosmic bullets. And they are shepherd. A few of them are pulled at impossible speeds toward the black hole. A lucky few die when they cross the event horizon. From Earth, the night sky is growing even more eventful. Dozens of comets crisscross the void. We launch our telescopes. Impact trajectories are calculated. Some of them will hit Earth, but it doesn't matter anymore. The real danger is just getting closer. When the black hole reaches Neptune, something even stranger happens. 23 days, then the anomaly reaches Saturn. A few hours later, it hits, while Mercury and Venus succumb on the same day. Six weeks out, and the black hole crosses Neptune's orbit. The ice giant that has orbited the sun for 4.5 billion years is wrenched from its path as the pool forms it into a wildly elliptical. Uranus follows, then Pluto, but not one of those planets is devoured by the black hole yet. They start orbiting the black hole. It is just like the moths around a flame, but our dance is not as particular. The black hole's tidal forces begin tearing the planets apart. Neptune's atmosphere is stripped from it in the first place. Methane clouds spiral into the long streamers pulled toward the event horizon that gives the planet its blue hue. Soon the rocky core follows as some pieces are broken from it. Each chunk glowing white hot from friction with the medium as it spirals to where all things end. And on Earth, we observe as we use our telescopes to see the planets present from the inception of the solar system vanish. But when Jupiter enters the danger zone, Earth feels it. The black hole arrives on Jupiter two weeks before the end. This is the beginning of the nightmare on Earth. 
Jupiter's gravity is what saved Earth for billions of years, shifting the incoming asteroids and comets away. Earth is attacked by Jupiter now. Its gravity pulls the Earth on itself and makes its orbital path unstable. The waves on Earth rise up to the hundreds of meters. It is not just the ocean, the whole Earth, fishtails, earthquakes reach nine and more in every place on the planet. Thousands of sleeping volcanoes resurrect in an instance. The atmosphere is getting hot from the friction of the tidal forces. Meanwhile, Jupiter experiences the same as Neptune. The great red spot that is greater than Earth turns into a spiral. Jupiter is morphed into a wide line of hydrogen with helium encircling the black hole. The hydrogen cloud glows brighter than the sun. Its radiation approaches Earth in a lethal way. And then the black hole comes for Earth. As Earth hurtles into doom, the black hole's gravity pulls apart even the sun. The star whose life it had once supported is now drawn out into an extended column of plasma, orbiting the black hole in a vast streak of glowing blood around a wound cut into space-time. It's called an accretion disk, a ring of violent gas swirling at almost the speed of light. Temperatures reach millions of degrees. The whole solar system is bathed in deadly X-rays and gamma rays. For the one and only time, night is brighter than day. From space, you'd witness a scene beyond comprehension, the sun as it's swallowed up, its light bending and twisting in physically impossible shapes around the event horizon. The final sunrise mankind will ever witness isn't happening, it's being pulled apart. But that doesn't mean that's the end of the story. The hole gets larger and larger, growing as it devours every atom it can find. Still, black holes, according to the theory created by Stephen Hawking, are not perpetual. After billions of billions of years, the holes leak and vanish every minute of every day through what is called Hawking radiation. Even after every sun has perished and every galaxy has vanished, the day will arrive when this hole will vanish as well, and the live energy planets would lose will be released again. And in that fragile swoosh of radiation, the corpse contains world peels, people by the power of an ocean of star, a mile-high statue, and a staggering light, will hardly scream when they plummet apart and be suspended and disperse to the rest of the chamber. Isn't that likely our story's final, agonizing conclusion? Everything becomes exactly what it was before. The black hole's gravity becomes infinite. At this point, Earth is a molten, ruined globe, stretching into an almost material, atoms torn from atoms, stream of matter as it approaches the event horizon. Time slows externally. To someone far away, Earth never falls in. It is only hanging there, frozen on the lip of eternity, red as it is reflecting the very last light it will ever reflect. But if you're on the same planet, Time doesn't just slow, then you'd vanish quite suddenly. In the final fraction of a second, light would turn insane and you'd see it. It would loop and twist itself into a circle, a photon sphere. Stars would slide across the sky, peeling themselves like silver ribbons, merging into one a ring around the night horizon's empty gap. They would be paused. The stars, as well as the Earth, even you, nothing else would exist. No light. Earth is not in existence. Mass, intensity, energy, information is everything. The black hole is crammed with it. Your mass, your energy, your gravity. The information of a planet is at the event horizon. In Earth's last hours, it is pulled out of orbit. The sun, star that has provided 4.5 billion years of warmth to our planet, contracts in the sky as we speed toward the black hole. The tidal forces become extreme. The side of the Earth that faces the black hole 
feels gravity thousands of times stronger than the far side does. This discrepancy physically stretches the planet. Scientists call this spaghettification. Earth's crust cracks open. Seas vacate the Earth, boiled instantly into the vacuum of space. Its atmosphere is being stripped in mere minutes. Mountains are flattened. Continents are torn apart. The planet stretches out, turning into an egg-shaped form 